Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at how to solve area problems with a missing measurement, and this is an analogy to help us better understand division. We are in our home links, Unit 6, Lesson 2, Finding the Unknown Side Length. Now, if you uh, take a look at the first problem, it says, how long is the unknown side S? Okay, and the side S belongs to this very long, very skinny rectangle that measures two meters wide. And we just so happen to know that the total area is 60 square meters. Okay. Now, when determining the area of a rectangle, we have to remember that area equals length times width. Okay. Now, if we're not given one of the measurements, in this case, the length, uh, it's like a multiplication problem with a missing factor, okay? So I know that there is uh, a 2 meter width times something, probably in meters, which is going to give me a total of 60 meters squared. Okay, now that's something, let's call that S, because they already told us it's called S. Okay, now that's a, a multiplication problem with a missing factor, but what we really want to do is turn this around and make it a division problem. Okay, so we're going to turn this around and make it 60 meters squared divided by 2 meters equals S. Okay, now in lesson 1 of unit 6, we learned about extending division facts. And uh, when we look at a problem like 60 divided by 2, we're going to ignore the, uh, the meters for just a moment. Uh, when you look at 60 divided by 2, it reminds me of 6 divided by 2. And since you and I know that 6 divided by 2 would give us 3, because 2 times 3 equals 6, right? If I in, uh, extend that math fact by adding another 0... Okay, on the left side of the equation to one of my factors, like this one, 2 times 30, that's going to give me a total of 60, right? So my uh, quotient, which is the answer to the division problem, has to be 30, right? Because 6 with 1 0 divided by 2 is going to give me 3 with a 0, because 2 times 30 equals 60. So my answer is 30 meters. Okay? Let's try another problem, shall we? Let's take a look, actually, at the table uh, for number 3. It says, fill in the unknown information about some rectangular rooms in a museum. And again, we're given uh, a table that has length, width, and area. Okay? So we just have to apply the area formula for rectangles to find the missing number, okay? So I know that the length of this rectangle is 6. I don't know the width, but I know the total area is 18. So if I draw a little model for myself, okay? So if this is 6, and I know the total area is 18 yards square, I just need to figure out my missing width, okay? So the question is, what times 6 gives me 18. Well, you and I both know that would be 3. 6 times 3 gives me 18. So my missing factor would be 3. Okay? It's as simple as that. If you're not up on your uh, memorization of uh, single-digit multiplication and division facts, you can always consult the inside back cover of your math journal. There is a multiplication and division table for you to reference. But hopefully at this point in your fourth grade career, you've uh, uh, started to memorize these facts so that you would look at blank times 8 equals 56 and know just off the top of your head, we need 7 because it's 7 times 8 it gives us 56. Okay? Now finally down at the bottom we have some extended division facts very similar to what we did in lesson 1. Let's take a look at number 7, shall we? 5,400 divided by 90. Uh, another way to look at that is 90 times something gives me 5,400, okay? 
So when I'm dealing with division facts that have a lot of zeros in them, I have to remember that I have to have the same number of zeros in my dividend as I do uh, shared between the other two numbers, my divisor and my quotient. Just like if I am multiplying two numbers together, I have to have the same number of zeros distributed between the two factors as I do in my product. So 90, or 9 with uh, one zero, times something gives me 5,400, or 54 with two zeros. So I know that my missing factor has to have a zero, okay? So the question is, what times 9 gives me 54? Well, of course, you and I both know that is 6. 6 times 9. So 9 with 1 0 times 6 with 1 0 gives me 54 with 2 zeros. Or 90 times 60 gives me 5,400. So now I just have to reverse that. 5,400 divided into 90 groups would give me 60 in each group. That's my quotient. Okay? Try the rest of these problems out on your own. I'm sure that uh, these will come quite easy to you. But in the off chance that they don't, uh, you need to talk to your math teacher. Ask them questions. Have them demonstrate some other problems for you. Okay? They don't know to help you unless you ask. Okay? I hope this uh, video was helpful for you. Uh, until we talk again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.